Hi. So this is a big problem. This is a kind of big issue, and we have five minutes. So it kind of sounds like if you want to make an apple pie, you have to invent the universe. And, and by the way, if you want the recipe, it's over here. <laughs> Which is silly, because you have to preheat the oven before you make the universe. But anyway, <laughs> another, another side note. Why are we in such a hurry? There's an old blog post, or it probably wasn't even called a blog post back then, by Peter Norwick in Teach Yourself Programming in 10 years, because he was upset with all the Teach Yourself Java and two hours kind of blog posts. So again, let's relax a bit. So yes, computers, they love numbers. Oh, they're so great. Here's one. <laughs> so even if this looks like the number five, it's only a representation of the fiveness that exists in the universe, but it will do for now. Uh, we have natural over operator overloads, so we can do five plus two, representation of seven. Um, but then what? I have seven now. I would like to add another number to seven, like three. This is gonna be a mess to maintain. So I have a problem. I would like to add a number to any other number at my convenience. So computers have memory, great. It's only for numbers, again, great. So let's make the computer do the work for us. So a variable is a feature where you can uh, give a number a name and the computer would put it somewhere. Sounds like a perfect fit. So I can have number of students is the representation seven. Or it can even do the calculation for me. How handy. So let's explore. What numbers can we store? Can we store zero? Yeah. Can we store negative numbers? What's the biggest number we can store? Is that a number? So, <laughs> the numbers you can store kind of depend on your computer. So, what if I want to be absolutely sure or more sure about the type I have? So, we can have types. They kind of depend on the computer, but it's a little bit better. They come before the, the variable, as before, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The thing is, we can keep doing this. Hey, I want to add, I want to run code sometimes, conditions. I want to keep asking the same question again and again, loops. I want to prevent repetition of code, or even just isolating a bit of code, functions. And this is what I call iterative learning. You learn what problem something is solving, and if you learn the problem set, you're more likely to use it. And also, and another important point, if a language feature you're using isn't solving the problem you have, then why are you using that language feature? So, let's have some fun. We shall see this example. <laughs> let's say, we are all here, we are learning C, we know nothing at all. We pick up K and R. It's page one. How much of the language would you know before you learn about pointers? Some of you here know the answer, because I've, I've, I've seen, shown this before. So let's go through the index. Is it in chapter one? No. Well, some of you might say, hey, arrays, but uh. <laughs> We even have arguments, but specifically called by value. Great, not in chapter one. Is it in chapter two? No, we have constants, we have type conversions, we have bitwise operators. We're, we're on page 52 now. Is it in chapter three? No. We even have do-while loops. Look at the last one. Oh, look at the last one. <laughs> Wonderful. It must be in chapter four, right? No. Recursion. <laughs> Register variables. We're on page 88. Okay, okay. It must be here. There it is. Pointers. So, we're on page 93. How long is this book? This book is 185 pages. A little more with appendix and reference manual. It's 50.27% through the book. So, summary. Teaching something through feature iteration can be helpful. You should question using features if they're not solving your problems. And you can learn half of C without even knowing what a pointer is. Thank you. <laughs>